Welcome back everybody, it's Jeff from New York and this is our fourth and final video on a four video series on our trip to the Grand Canyon. If you missed parts one through three, when you're done watching this, go back and check them out. They're pretty cool and there's no need to go in order, so check them out at your convenience. In part four here, we're going to walk a little bit more on the Rim Trail, check out more of the Grand Canyon, as well as the Hopi House and Verkamp's Visitor Center. Then we'll head back to Vegas. It'll take us about five hours for more fun and frivolity in Sin City. We're taking a couple steps off of the Rim Trail and heading into the Hopi House right here, which was built by the same architect, Mary Coulter, back in 1905, I believe. And she's the same architect that built the El Tavor Hotel, which is in Video 3. Architecturally, the two buildings are in stark contrast of each other, and you'd never know that the same person designed both buildings. The Red Sandstone Multi-Story Gift Shop and Cultural Center was modeled after the buildings at a nearby Hopi Indian Reservation. Today, the building remains a gift shop and is a purveyor of American Indian art and jewelry as well. The building is organic and uneven. It has thatched ceilings and wood beams, and the timbers are peeling bark, and the branches still have some of their dried leaves after all these years. A closer look at the beams, and you'll notice that some are rounded and without bark, and a sharp eye will spot the WUT stamped on some of the beams. It's the abbreviation for Western Union Telegraph, whose poles were repurposed by the architect back in 1905. I'm not sure if the ceilings in here have been treated, but something tells me that if a fire started, it would spread very quickly. Aha, the building has a sprinkler system, so that's some line of defense in case a fire should break out. The gift shop doesn't have that many souvenirish type items. It's more of a learning experience here. Out of all the places along the rim that we visited as far as gift shops, this is probably the one that I would spend most of my time in. Wonderful books, wonderful artifacts, and things like that to go through. Of course, it wouldn't be the Southwest without silver and turquoise. The doorways in this building are very low and the stairways are very narrow. We're going to head upstairs to the second floor and when we're done up there, we're going to head back down an even narrower set of stairs with a even lower doorway. 
While I was up here, I looked to see if the second story was accessible to people who are physically challenged, and there doesn't appear to be a way to get up here. So if you are physically challenged, uh, the bottom floor would probably be the limit to your visit to this place. I really like the items that are in here. Lots of uh, influence of American Indian, in particular Hopi Indian um, artifacts and crafts. It's, it's really cool, and it is authentic as well. You won't find too many Made in China stickers here. Well, maybe on some of the keychains, but I can guarantee you 99% of this is Made in America. And if you think about it, this is about as American as something can get. This is a Hopi door, and most authentic Hopi buildings have Hopi doors. They lead to places of worship or a shrine, also known as a kiva. And there's Hopi Sam. A little story about Hopi Sam while we have some time. Hopi Sam is a member of the Hopi tribe and became very vocal about a recent auction in Paris, France. A few years ago, 24 Native American items went on the auction block in Paris. The auction went ahead despite of the appeal of the Hopi tribe to cancel the sale of items it considers sacred. The U.S. Embassy also asked for the auction not to happen. The appeal was challenged in a court of law in Paris and it was unsuccessful. Uh, and when I say Paris, Paris, I mean the one in France, not the one on the Vegas Strip, since we seem to be visiting that place a lot. But I digress. Anyway, the auction went off, and it emerged that the mystery buyer was the Los Angeles-based nonprofit Annenberg Foundation, which said in a statement that it planned to return 21 items to the Hopi Nation in Arizona and three items to the Apache tribe as well. A spokesperson for the foundation said that these are not trophies to have on one's mantle. They are truly sacred works for the Native Americans. They do not belong in auction houses or private collections, and it gives us immense satisfaction to know that they will be returned home to their rightful owners, the Native Americans. The Annenberg Foundation and the decision was obviously praised by Hopi leaders. Shout out to the Annenberg Foundation. And this is that back stairway I was talking about on the way up. It's even narrower and steeper than the one we came up in, but um, they don't put any objects here that I can easily knock over, thank goodness. Well, I suppose I could knock over that pumpkin, but I wouldn't feel too bad. This door to the first floor literally comes up between my belly button and chest, and I almost had to get on all fours to get through the door. And that was the Hopi House, a very cool place to visit. If you're up here for an extremely limited time, I suggest you visit the Hopi House and the El Tavor Hotel. Uh, two of my favorite places up here. And ironically, both are designed by the architect Mary Coulter in 1905. And we're back on the rim trail heading towards Verkamp's Visitor Center. Wait a minute, look at that cliff on the right. Is that a huge face staring at me? Or perhaps it's just a thin air again. I don't know, it's kind of creepy. So we're about to come across a plaque that's called Rhythm of Erosion, and basically it states that if you're the Grand Canyon, it sucks to be you because it took you millions of years to look as beautiful as you do. 
but in a mazillion billion years, you're going to be flat as a parking lot. Now, let's face reality. In a mazillion billion years, I probably won't be here, nor would you be here either. And it's my belief that the Earth will eventually be returned to the animals, trees, and the ocean. So, as I see it, if the Earth isn't swallowed up by the sun within a million bazillion years, the animals will have a huge parking lot to park their cars in. Alrighty, let's visit Verkamp's Visitor Center. I'm already digging the porch. I love a good front porch. Coming through the door, the first thing I notice is that to the right is more or less a place where you can spend your money, and to the left is a place where you can learn a lot more about the Grand Canyon, and in particular, the Rim Trail. Here's some Grand Canyon jigsaw puzzles. I love jigsaw puzzles, and so does my dad. He likes the computer app ones, and I like the good old-fashioned physical 1,000-piece ones. However, a few years ago, I adopted Tom and Jerry, two kittens from a animal shelter who will not let me do jigsaw puzzles in peace. No matter how hard I try, no matter what I put together while I'm home, they manage to take apart while I'm at work. Okay, so I could live here. Between that front porch with a world-class view and this fireplace, I think I could make myself very comfy and at home. Back home in New York, this would be like a Soho studio apartment. Well, okay, maybe not. Although New York does have a canyon of heroes, which is not quite the Grand Canyon, but it's pretty much Broadway down in Lower Manhattan where ticker tape parades are held. And as I always say, that, my friends, is another video on this channel, so check it out. Walking along the floor here, you'll see a timeline of the Grand Canyon Village, a village that started in the late 1800s. It all started with a train that came off of the Santa Fe Railroad and uh, came here through a Grand Canyon spur, and that started the development of this village. I go into more detail on that in uh, video one, I believe. And again, this side of the building is more about the village history, and the other side is more about the Benjamins. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. When you do, you're automatically enrolled in the next $50 gift card giveaway here on the New York channel. If you plan on visiting Vegas in the near future, check out the link below in the description. 50 things to do and tips while visiting Las Vegas. By the way, if you're a regular of this channel, and I hope you are, and if you're looking for Missy the Rubber Ducky Showgirl, look no further. I don't believe she made it into this video, and as a matter of fact, she sent me a text not too long ago saying she took a helicopter back to the Las Vegas Strip for a manicure and a pedicure. She also said that she was getting her feathers redone because she wants to look good when we head back to Vegas after the Grand Canyon. So when we get back there and start showing videos of the strip again, just uh, keep an eye out for her as usual. These spring water kiosks are located in several places along the Rim Trail, and they encourage you to refill your refillable water bottle with fresh spring water located at the kiosk, as opposed to going into the gift shop and buying a new plastic bottle. The water actually comes directly below you on in an uh, underground spring along the Rim Trail. It's very fresh tasting, and it's also ice cold, very refreshing. And as the kiosks say, plastic bottles do nobody any good, especially at the Grand Canyon where they are blown over the rim accidentally and eventually all end up at the bottom of the canyon or in the Colorado River. And here they're showing you the different types of rocks that form the layers of the Grand Canyon. You know, you could be here for an entire day or several days for that matter and never get tired of looking at the canyon. It seems to be constantly changing with the time of day and the shadows that are casted. And here's a plaque uh, showing the history of the El Tavar Hotel, which I believe was covered in video three. You really have to check it out. It's a beautiful hotel and very historic. And here's one of those You Are Here maps that show all the different buildings along the Rim Trail. We visited all of them. They're all really interesting, and I hope you go back and check out the videos. 
And before we head back to Vegas, I just want to show you a sign that I thought was one of the most unusual signs I've ever seen. It says, please don't drink the water from the toilets and urinals. And it shows a little glass with a straw. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, comment, ask some questions, and most importantly, subscribe by clicking on the button on the left. You can visit all of my New York videos by clicking on the top right, or check out my videos on other favorite places to visit by clicking on the bottom right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the city.